Hey everybody, I'm Dave Carger for IMDb at the Toronto International Film Festival 2018. Very happy to be joined by the crew from one of my favorite movies at this festival, Papi Chulo. Hi guys, great to see you all. Hello, thank you for having us. This movie is such a breath of fresh air in this festival, which is otherwise filled with really heavy, true stories, sad movies, movies that make you angry. This is a movie that really makes you happy. Uh, John, tell me where this idea even came from for you. It's a very LA story and you're not from anywhere near there. How did you figure that out? <laughs> I read it. Yeah. <laughs> um, thank you for the kind words. It's a comedy about loneliness, which is a bit of a, a feast to try and attempt to do. Um, and uh, it sprang from my own experience of being in Los Angeles, where I've spent lots of time down the years going to the nature of the business. and. Uh, just what it's, what it's like to live in a big city and what it's like to navigate these spaces and what loneliness feels like in an urban area. And I would say also as an outsider looking in at Los Angeles, the interaction between the working class Latino and middle class white communities is a source of fascination to me as a European. Um, you know, there's a really uh, interesting dynamic at play there where on the surface it seems like it's quite transactional, but there's also a real emotional exchange occurring between the two communities, you know, even just small examples that I would see when I was in like West Hollywood, I'd see an old man leaning on a gatepost and talking to his gardener for far too long. Right. You know, or a, a nanny and, and the kids with both parents at work. You know, there's a real emotional underpinning to these relationships that you see in Los Angeles all the time and that fascinates me. Yeah. And it fascinates me as a foreigner, of course, but also just as a writer and a fan of Los Angeles. It's a great space to go into and, 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 and poke around in. You know? Matt, your character is a weatherman who's taking some time off from work mm -hmm. and he basically hires Alejandro's character at $20 an hour to be his friend. Uh, and it creates... Not initially, but yeah. It, initially it to paint the that, deck, yeah, yeah. but then to be his friend. Yeah. And it, it creates so many lovely and funny moments and I feel like I'm seeing you do comedy <laughs> in a way that I haven't before on TV or stage or even film. Was that part of the excitement for you to get to show that side? Yeah, there was definitely a part of it. I, I, I read the script and, and I loved it. And it was just so human and so unique. It was unlike anything I'd ever read before. And the relationships were so real. And the humor was that my favorite kind of humor, which comes out of you know our basic human interactions we have every day that can pre present us with some really awkward circumstances. And uh, so I, I love John's voice. I was a fan of his. And, and, and to, I just wanted to be a part of it once I saw that it was really a movie about uh, human relationships breaking down barriers and connecting people who come from different backgrounds in a, in a time when you know, a lot of people are doing the opposite. So. Alejandro, did you guys laugh on set at a lot of the awkward moments that happen? Because there is a language barrier between the two characters. Uh, they have to kind of figure out what they're each trying to say, or maybe they have no idea what the other one's trying to say. Were you guys laughing at those moments? Uh, no, I'm, I'm a very serious actor. <laughs> <laughs> As you can tell. <laughs> no, no, we had, we had a great time. I mean, with John at, at the helm and the rest of the crew and everybody, and this, this actor here is, is amazing to, to portray uh, uh, the scenes. Uh, we just have a good time yeah. uh, getting to know each other and at the same time as actors playing with each other. Right. Yeah. You're, you're so convincing in this part as a man who speaks such limited English that when you walked in the room, I did not know if I was going to hear you speak English or if you were going to have like a translator with you, if you even knew who Matt Bomer was. Like I, I, but so now to, to see you like this, it's kind of blowing my mind. It's really, it's really crazy. Um, there's one moment that I found really interesting. As I said, you do play a weatherman, and you get recognized quite a few times. And at one point, you're trying to like divert attention away from yourself, and you say, oh, no, it's a guy who looks like me, but it's not me. Yeah. Have you ever tried to pull that in your real life when someone <laughs> tries to recognize you? Yes. Uh, <laughs> maybe once or twice when it was a time when I couldn't stop and interact with somebody, yeah. Did it work? Uh, yeah. The person believed think, that you were not. It's usually, I, I think I was with my kids both times, our kids, and I didn't want to, we were like crossing a crosswalk or something. It just wasn't a good time to <laughs> engage. So, okay. Yeah, but it was, it was effective. It's a good out. Yeah. It's Thank a good you. out. Nah. John, there is a character in this movie that I think almost steals the movie, and it's Siri <laughs> on the iPhone. There are so many funny moments <laughs> where you're, we hear Siri getting these instructions from Matt's often clueless character. <laughs> 
Was there something about Siri and the voice? Are you, is that something that you use as a crutch a lot? Well, I just find it interesting that the disembodied uh, robotic voice on the end of the phone can frequently, especially in big cities, be the person to whom you talk the most. Yes. And that's poignant and, and, and also hilarious. Um, because she's not, God bless her, the smartest, no. not, you know, <laughs> sharpest knife in the drawer. So, you know, it's kind of interesting that we lean on what is so obviously an in inadequate surrogate for human um, uh, affection and, and, and emotion. So, yeah, I think it's that perfect kind of intersection of comedy and, and drama. You yeah. know, it's funny and sad at the same time. One scene I think a lot of people are going to talk about, you guys go to a party together and on the lift ride home, Borderline by Madonna comes on the radio and it creates this lovely moment where it's this moment of commonality because you both kind of know the words to Borderline. Was that really fun to do? Did you have to study up on the song, Matt, or did you already feel like you knew it pretty well? I knew it some and I revisited it a couple weeks before we started because I didn't want to know it just right off the tip of my tongue. Right. Um, I wanted it to feel somewhat spontaneous. Um, but that was one of my favorite things that we shot, and thank you, Madonna. We really appreciate it, <laughs> letting yeah, us use that song. Really, thank you. Really Is that us. not easy to do, to get her to agree to put the song in? That was a, a collective effort, um, as was the scene itself. Like, the wonderfully naturalistic performance between the, th the two guys was yeah. something that we uh, three cooked up together, but also the process of getting to Madonna was something that was fought for on all sides. So we absolutely love her. And, uh, Alejandro, are you the one that really made it happen? Are you the one that got Madonna to say yes to the song? Oh, yeah, me and her are like this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They're first cousins. Uh, okay, there, yeah. it makes sense. I see the resemblance. Yeah. And then the last thing I'm very curious about is this movie really does present a strange friendship, a, a non-obvious friendship. What would each of you say is the most unique, interesting friendship you've ever had? I, when I first moved to LA, I moved to LA first in 2006 to try and become famous because I feel like it had never been tried before. <laughs> and um, for the first week that I was there, I was staying in the house of a very famous Irish musician in Malibu. And on the first morning, massively jet as a favor, he was a friend of a friend of a friend and, and he was out of town, so I had the key to the house. And on the first morning, this is a long answer, I'm sorry. Okay, no, I'm loving it. I'm but trying to imagine whose on house On the first it morning, I stepped out of the house to take in the air and breathe in this new environment in the door shut behind me. Oh. And I had no shoes. I had a shorts and a T-shirt. And I had $20 in my pocket, and I couldn't get back into the house. And I had to spend the whole day out on the streets of LA with $20 and um, walking up and down the PCH trying to find a way onto the public beach so I could at least sleep, but couldn't find the beach. So I just spent the whole day walking up and down that massive and very busy road. And I finally went to uh, the forecourt of a restaurant and there was a Latino guy sitting under an umbrella parking cars and he gave me his dinner and I sat under the umbrella with him for four hours. And he lent me his phone to try and call the person who owned the house. And that's the most uh, unusual and interesting and kind of relevant to this story, wow. little friendship I've ever had. I hope Bono let you back in the house. <laughs> How did he do that? <laughs> How did he do that? It wasn't Bono. Oh, shoot. It was. It, <laughs> I've said too much. <laughs> Anyone else? I think LA is that type of city where everyone comes there from somewhere else and is yeah. looking for connections and, and to recreate themselves and reinvent themselves. So I think over the years I've had interesting relationships with landlords or people I've encountered out in public spaces that I might not have had in other cities. Yeah. I hope everybody sees this movie, Papi Chulo. It's so much fun, guys. I just And also, I should say, very moving at the end. It's not just a comedy, it's really great. Before I let you go, since we are in Canada, Matt, please pick a question out of our IMDb Mountie hat for all of you to answer. <laughs> Mountie hat. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Tiff, do you, do you want to read it? Right? No, it's you. Uh, Tiff is a festival for film lovers. What else do you wish there was a festival for? Cheese. Cheese. I'm sure there is one there somewhere. There must be, right? Wisconsin. I bet you Wisconsin, yeah. yeah. What would you like to see at a cheese festival? Just like a ton of cheese, a ton of people <laughs> eating cheese, different ways of, of making and Melted. devouring cheese, melting it, yeah. putting it on sticks, whatever. Okay. Just a cheese themed event, okay. yeah. Williamsburg artisanal pickles. <laughs> Something to discover. <laughs> they would actually pair quite nicely. Yeah, they would. exactly. Cheese yeah. and pickles. <laughs> uh, for me, it would be tacos. Festival of tacos. Love us. There's so many different varieties of, of how to serve uh, 
uh, tacos and the meat and whatever it is that you put in there. So that would be a plethora of. I'd be at that festival. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> tacos and tequila. Are you put cheese and pickles in your tacos? I think we're onto yeah. something. Here, I think folks. we're on. Yeah, <laughs> cheese and pickles. I, we could open up our Let's own do business. This. <laughs> so, yeah. I'll be there. I'll see you next year. Thanks, guys. Thank really Thank appreciate you. it. Thank you so much. <laughs>